Hey friends, Matt aka Mark Tiln here, and today I want to show you how you can create your very own authentic sounding drum breaks like this. using Ableton Live. So before we can get started creating our own drum breaks, first we need access to some good quality acoustic drum samples. Now the samples that you use will significantly affect the sound of your final drum break, but lucky for us, there are some great options out there that are both inexpensive and free as well. Now, of course, the techniques that I'm gonna show you in this video can be applied to any set of drum samples, but here are some of my recommendations if you don't have a good acoustic drum sample library. First off, if you're on Ableton Live Suite, there are some great drum samples under the drum booth and drum essentials packs that come with Ableton Live. And if you want to go and splurge some money on some other packs on the Ableton website, there are also some other great packs there, depending on the style of drums that you want to go for. Now, if you don't have Ableton Live Suite, but you have some money and you want to go and buy some third party plugins, I can highly recommend ones like Addictive Drums and Modo Drums from IK Multimedia. Also, there are plenty of drum sample libraries that come with Contact if you buy complete, but there are also two good free options, which are Stephen Slate Drums, which also has a paid version as well as Spitfire Labs drums. So in order to stay fair here in this video, I'm gonna be using the Spitfire Labs drums sample library, which will work more than well enough for what we wanna achieve in this video. I'll put a link down below in the description to where you can go and download Spitfire Labs for yourself. Now, of course, they're not sponsoring this video or anything. I just think it's a great free product and will work really well for creating our very own drum breaks. Okay, so once we've found the sample library we wanna use, first off, we just wanna put it onto a new MIDI track. So I'm gonna go and grab the Spitfire Labs plugin here and put it onto my MIDI track number one. Then I've got to go and check the drums from the drop down menu, open up the drums pack, and now we have a fairly decent sounding drum sample library. Now the first trick is to set our tempo. And for this, we wanna start with a slower tempo for a reason that I'll talk about at the end of the video, but really I recommend anything below 120 BPM. Really whatever you use over to you, but I'm gonna set it to 100. Next, let's go ahead and create a MIDI clip. You can do this in either session view or arrangement view, but I'm gonna use arrangement view for this. And I'm gonna create a four bar long MIDI clip. I'm just gonna select four bars here, right click, and click on insert empty MIDI clips. Now, if you're using a third party plugin like I am, unfortunately you won't see the names of the sounds show up down the left on the piano roll right here. But typically a good place to start is just to turn on the MIDI editor preview button with this little headphone icon right here. And then you can just click on the notes on the left-hand side of the piano roll to figure out what notes correspond to which sounds. <laughs> In the case of this Spitfire Labs drum library, C1 is our kick drum, and then we have our snares and hi-hats and toms and stuff like that going up from there. First, let's program in a really simple drum pattern. For this pattern, we're gonna go with a kind of amen break style groove. And this is really popular as a starting point, particularly if you're doing genres like drum and bass or something like that. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put a snare on our second and fourth beats of every bar right here. And then I'm gonna put a kick drum on the first beat of every bar, as well as the off beat of the third beat in every bar. I'm gonna select all of the MIDI notes and bring up their velocities to about 100. And here's our really basic groove. From here, we wanna add some interesting syncopated notes to really give some interesting groove and swing. A really simple thing we can do here is to add some more snares. And I'm gonna add these snares just before the third beat of each bar and just after the third beat of each bar. And so now our loop sounds like this. Now we can also add in some extra kick drums as well and vary the placement of our kick drums. I'll keep the first bar the same. For the second bar, I'm gonna add in a second kick drum on the offbeat of the first beat. I'll keep the third bar the same. And then in the fourth bar, I'm gonna add a kick drum again on that offbeat of the first beat, as well as the offbeat of the final beat. And now we've got a little bit more of an interesting syncopated pattern going on. From here, we can add in some ghost notes. And ghost notes are basically lighter notes that kind of lead into the more heavily accented and played notes. As an example, let's go here to this first bar where we have these syncopated snare drums in the middle. Before each of these, I'm actually gonna add in another snare drum, but each of these snare drums I'm gonna have at a lower velocity. So now it sounds a little bit more like a snare roll. 
We can continue this as well by adding some ghost notes before these accented snare hits. And we could even do this with kick drums as well. I'm just gonna delete these last two bars here and then duplicate the first two bars. So now we can copy over those ghost notes and then we can make some further variations here in the last two bars. Specifically, what I'm gonna do is create a variation here in the last bar to just vary up the pattern a little bit. So all I'm gonna do is just create some variation in the placement of these snares and kick drums. I'm gonna maybe add a snare here, a bit more of an accented one, move this kick drum over to here, maybe make this snare a little bit more accented here, maybe add in another ghost note right here, and then have a little bit of a snare roll towards the end. And so now our final bar sounds like this. You can further vary these patterns as much as you want. Just bear in mind the idea of having accented beats and hits and more of these kind of smaller ghost notes as a way of creating some more movement and groove in the loop. From here, let's add some hi-hats. To start with, I'm just gonna add a hi-hat on every single 16th note in our MIDI clip. To do this, I'm just gonna add a single hi-hat at the start of our clip, select it, hit the duplicate button, select both of these, duplicate them, select them both, duplicate them, select them, duplicate them, select them, duplicate them, select them, and duplicate them with Command and D. And now I have a constant 16th note hi-hat across the entirety of our MIDI clip. However, this doesn't quite sound super natural. So what I wanna do here is vary the velocity of the hi-hats. Now, of course, you can do this manually by selecting which hi-hats you wanna vary, holding down the command key and clicking and dragging up and down to change the velocities of these hi-hats. Or you can select every single hi-hat Come over to the randomize section in the left-hand side if you're on Ableton Live 11. Change your randomize range to about 15 or so. Click the randomize button and that will randomize the velocities of your hi-hats. If any of them are a little bit too loud, you can go in there and manually turn them down. You can also manually turn down all of them at the same time by selecting all of them clicking and dragging down with the command key held. Now, if you wanna create some more randomization with the velocity, we can use the velocity range feature in our note tab in our clip view. I'm just gonna select every single one of our hi-hats and increase the velocity range by about 10 or so. And so now we have a much more varied hi-hat velocity pattern. And now we can add in some open hi-hats. And with our open hi-hats, I wanna make sure that I'm not playing an open hi-hat at the same time that I'm playing a closed hi-hat. Again, trying to keep it more authentic and real. So for this, I'm gonna add in open hi-hats mainly on the offbeats by just moving our offbeat notes up onto our open hi-hats on both the first and the third beats of every bar. And from here, you can vary the pattern even further. You might wanna add in some more open hi-hats, such as in this last bar right here, and maybe even extend out some of these open hi-hats by deleting these closed hi-hats and extending the notes a little bit. From here, you can vary the pattern as much as you like. You could add ride cymbals, crash cymbals, tambourines, anything else like that. But just bear in mind that if you wanna keep it authentic, it should be playable. Drummers only have two feet and two hands, so it's really hard for them to play more than four sounds at once, really three sounds at once. Typically speaking, you don't really wanna have a kick drum playing at the same time as a snare drum. Of course, there are plenty of exceptions to this rule as well, but if you don't really care about making it playable or authentic, go ahead and add as many sounds as you want. For instance, I might also add a ride cymbal here on every single downbeat. Once we've created our basic beat, what we can do is start to go and add some humanization to this. Now, when a human plays a drum kit, it's never gonna be exactly on the grid. And there are two different main ways that we can go ahead and add some humanization to our clip. The first way is by manually adjusting individual notes. For example, I can go in here and I can just manually move some of these hi-hats, making some shorter, having some start later or earlier as an example. And that can really change the feel or the groove or the swing of the pattern. Now, of course, the further that you drag these notes away from being quantized to the grid, the more chance you have of it sounding a little bit sloppy. The second way you can do this is by using grooves inside of Ableton Live. And this is the way that I would recommend to do it. First off, to apply a groove to our MIDI clip, I'm gonna go over to the clip options menu on the left-hand side and go to the groove section. Here, I'm gonna click on the little hot swap icon 
and then I can select a groove from my list of grooves that come with Ableton Live. I'm gonna go down and find a 16th note swing by coming down to the swing section. And let's maybe go to the swing 16th 59 by double clicking on that. And now we can apply that groove to this MIDI clip. This video is not about grooves, but if you'd like to see a video more about grooves, let me know and I can make sure to put one together. So now our MIDI clip sounds a little bit more swung and humanized. But of course, we've added a little bit too much swing to it now, and it's not really what I want. I want a little bit more of a straight sounding groove. So in order to adjust this, I'm gonna go over to my groove pool that's opened up now that I've added a groove to this break, and I'm going to adjust some of the parameters in here. I'm gonna pull down the timing, a little bit to about 50%, increase the random by about 20%. And I'm actually gonna also increase the quantize value to maybe 40% or so. And once I've set these values, I can play around with them to adjust them further. But what these different values are gonna do is make it so that the groove is a little bit straighter, add in some variation and randomization to the groove as well. I'm gonna pull down the timing even further because I don't want it super swung. And now we have our basic drum break pattern. Once we've got our basic pattern, now we can look at processing. Now, in order to make the processing for this sound a little bit more natural and authentic, we can kind of emulate the sound of running it through an analog mixing desk, running it through some tape machines, something like that, by using a few really basic effects and plugins inside of our door. Now, before we start actually adding any plugins, I wanna talk really briefly about tuning your drums. Some different sample libraries will give you the ability to individually tune each of your drum samples either up or down to your taste. However, in the case of Spitfire Labs, we don't get the ability to do that. So instead, what I'm gonna do is add a shifter device after the labs right here make sure it's set to frequency mode, and then I can use the fine tune control to either pitch the entire kit up or down a little bit. I kind of like it there, so we'll leave that there. First off, I'm gonna add some compression. I'm gonna use Ableton Live's glue compressor for this, and I'm gonna add some quite heavy compression. We're gonna pull down the threshold quite significantly, pull up the makeup gain a little bit to compensate, and then we're gonna adjust our attack and release controls depending on how transient -y we want the sound to be, as well as how squashed we want the sound to be. For example, I wanna let through some more transients. I'm gonna increase the attack control right here. And I wanna squash the sound a little bit more as well, so I'm gonna increase the release a little bit too. I can pull down the threshold. And if you want the kick drum to affect the compressor less, as I do in this instance, you can open up the sidechain toggle option right here and just simply engage the EQ. And now the kick drum is going to affect the gain reduction of the compressor less than it otherwise would. From here, I'm gonna add some really standard EQ, and I'm gonna use Ableton Live's channel EQ for this. So with channel EQ, there's a few different things we can do. We could just increase the high frequencies a little bit, boost the low frequencies a little bit too, and maybe reduce the mids a little bit as well. You can play around with the EQ to your taste. If you'd like it less bassy, more bassy, go for it. I'm just gonna increase the mids a little bit, pull down the highs, and now I've got something a little bit more kind of lo-fi. From here, we can add some saturation. And I'm gonna use Ableton Live's saturator for this. I'm gonna make sure it's on analog clip, engage the soft clip setting, and increase the drive by about seven dB and decrease the output by about five dB to compensate. If we wanna add some kind of tape warble, we could do this using Ableton Live's chorus ensemble effect, switch the chorus ensemble to vibrato mode, and then bring the amount down significantly, as well as the rate, to just give this some slight pitch warble. You can also increase the warmth a little bit to add some more subtle saturation. If you wanna give it some kind of digital degradation sound, we can use Ableton Live's Redux effect. With Redux, we can reduce the bit depth to maybe like 12 and reduce the sample rate to around 30. You can play around with this depending on how degraded you want the signal. From here, let's add some reverb. I'm gonna use Ableton Live's hybrid reverb, and I'm simply gonna have this on the convolution mode with some early reflections coming from the convolution part of the reverb. Change the convolution to maybe the Ableton Studio mid. 
And if you want to add some reverb before all of this processing, you can do that too. In the case of labs, there's some reverb baked into the labs plugin. So I can open that up and increase the amount of reverb on the drums. And finally, I want to add some limiting to this just to bring it all up a little bit. For this, I'm going to use Ableton Live stock standard limiter and increase the gain until we start applying some gain reduction. And there you have it, you have your very own authentic sounding drum break. From here, we can render this out to audio. I can simply right click and freeze the track, then pull our drum break onto a new audio track by holding down Alt and clicking and dragging onto a new audio track. And now for the reason that we made this much slower to begin with. By making our drum break slower, we can speed it up and make it sound a little bit more authentic for genres such as jungle and drum and bass by speeding it up and re-pitching it without degrading the signal too much. As an example, if I now wanted to use this break in a drum and bass type song, I could put my tempo up to say, 170 and now inside of the clip I can change my warping mode to repitch which gives it a more authentic sound. If I don't like how repitched it is I can change it to something like texture and then simply adjust the pitch as I want. If I want the tempo a little bit slower, I can also go to maybe 140 and I'm not degrading the signal hugely because I'm pitching it up and speeding it up rather than slowing it down. When we slow down or pitch down a sample, the quality of the sample tends to degrade much quicker than when we pitch it up or speed it up. can really hear the time stretching there. By the way, if you've enjoyed this video so far and want to see more videos and content like this in the future, make sure to hit that subscribe button, leave a like and a comment. It really does help me out. And if you're really enjoying it, then make sure to head on over to my Buy Me A Coffee page where you can support me by buying me a coffee. And you can also download a bunch of breaks that I've made for free over there as well. Make sure to check out the link in the description for that. And so now you should have a good understanding of how to create your very own unique, authentic sounding drum breaks inside of Ableton Live. From these basics, you can go ahead and add more more crazy things like more interesting processing, experimenting with more interesting rhythms and fills, try out different drum libraries, etc. And really by combining all of the techniques that I've outlined in this video, you can create some really interesting, unique and cool sounding drum breaks that no one else has access to. That's all from me. If you'd like to learn some more cool sound design techniques, feel free to check out this video right here where you can learn how to create your very own evolving pad sounds using Wavetable inside of Ableton Live. But otherwise, I hope you're having a fantastic day and I'll see you all in the next video.